The heat we feel from the sun is emitted from its surface, which is over 6,000 degrees Celsius. That's nowhere near hot enough for fusion to take place though. So let's move deep down into the core of the sun, where the temperature and pressure are high enough for fusion reactions to take place. At the sun's core is a dense hydrogen plasma, a soup of electrons and protons. The protons are shown here in red, and it's these particles that we'll focus on. They bounce around with tremendous force, but they don't want to collide with each other. Positive charges repel, so when two protons get close, the repulsion makes them swerve apart. The closer they come together, the stronger the repulsion gets. These protons really don't want to be close to each other. Every so often though, two protons will hit each other in a head-on collision, which will force them very close together, and a new force will come into play. It's called the strong nuclear force. It only works over short distances, but get two protons close enough together, and this force can overcome the repulsion caused by their positive charges. The protons are pulled tightly together, at which point something a bit weird happens. One of these protons emits two smaller particles. One is a neutrino, a tiny particle that moves at almost the speed of light. These ghostly particles can stream through matter as if it's not there, so although this neutrino gets emitted deep in the core of the sun, it just streams out into space, never to be seen again. The proton also emits an anti-electron. This is the antimatter version of an electron, and whilst a normal electron has a negative charge, this has a positive charge. Remember this anti-electron, we'll come back to it later. This particle carries the positive charge away, and so the proton, having lost its electrical charge, becomes a neutron. It's a process called beta plus decay, and this is how the neutrons in helium get formed. We're now left with a proton and a neutron joined together. A heavy form of hydrogen called deuterium. This deuterium nucleus will bounce around in the sun's core with all the other particles, but will very quickly have another encounter. Within around one second, it will have a head-on collision with another proton, and they'll come together with enough force for the next fusion event to take place. The strong nuclear force will once again work its magic, and the proton and the deuterium will snap tightly together to form a new nucleus containing two protons and one neutron. This is a light form of helium called helium-3. When this fusion takes place, it emits a powerful gamma ray which gets absorbed by the surrounding plasma and adds heat to the sun's core. The helium-3 nucleus that was produced bounces around in the dense solar plasma with the other particles until eventually it meets another helium-3 nucleus. If they meet with enough force, the final fusion event takes place. Once the nuclei are close enough, the strong nuclear force takes over and pulls them together forcefully. We now have six particles pulled together, but this final fusion event ejects two of the protons from the newly formed nucleus. Being fired back into the plasma with huge force, they add yet more heat into the sun's core and will get reused in further fusion events. The nucleus that remains consists of two protons and two neutrons, known as helium-4. This helium is the final end result of the fusion reactions that have taken place, the sun's exhaust gas, if you like. But there's a loose end we still need to tie up, the electrons. The fusion reaction shown here fused four hydrogen nuclei into one nucleus of helium. Each of these hydrogen nuclei had an associated electron, so four electrons in total. A helium atom, though, only has two electrons, so we have two electrons left over. Ones that used to belong to hydrogen atoms, but have no place in the new helium atom. What happens to these leftover electrons? Remember those anti-electrons from the first stage of fusion? They will quickly collide with the leftover normal electrons and, when a particle and an antiparticle meet, 
they emit a flash of gamma radiation and then they're gone. The particles are annihilated, leaving nothing behind. And the gamma ray flash that was produced when they met adds even more heat into the core of the Sun. And so those leftover electrons have vanished and we've balanced the books. This is how the Sun fuses four hydrogen atoms into one atom of helium. And it does this a hundred billion 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 times per second and has been doing so for the last five billion years. The heat produced by this fusion process works its way to the surface of the Sun and, after an eight-minute journey through space, provides the Earth with its daylight and its warmth. <laughs>